calls, and we'll keep answering them here. Diane? Okay, Sam, thanks. Well, we're turning now to a story we read, in fact, in this month's Glamour magazine. Eight million Americans, you know, have their identity stolen every year, but one woman in San Francisco decided to go after the thief herself, and she became a sort of modern-day Nancy Drew. ABC's Mary Fulginiti has the story. Mary, good morning. Good morning, Diane. Karen Lodrick was shocked to learn that someone had been stealing her mail and robbing her not only of her personal information, but the money in her checking account, as well as her identity. She was determined to get her life back and catch the person responsible for taking it. So I'm waiting, and this woman's waiting also. Karen Lodrick waited for her morning coffee at Starbucks when she realized the woman next to her looked eerily familiar. I'm like, okay, th something's not right about her. I go, she's, something's wrong with her. Something's not, and she has that coat. That distinctive fur-trimmed coat. Karen recognized the woman from bank surveillance photos as the person who stole her identity. Her name was Maria Nelson, and she had been wreaking havoc in Karen's life for months. My gut feeling was saying, this is something. She is something. Don't let her go. Call the police. Hi, this is San Francisco 911. What's the problem, ma'am? This woman has been taking my identity for the last five months. It's been a living hell. <laughs> Somebody to come to um, Laguna and Market. She's running. Karen wasn't about to let her get away. The fearless five foot two web consultant chased her suspect on foot for 45 minutes through the streets of San Francisco. I know who you are. Don't let her go. She's identity theft. This is a list of some of the charges. This nightmare began five months earlier when she received a telephone call from her bank about thousands of dollars in suspicious charges. And it was just, I mean, charge after charge after charge. And, you know, $50 here, $300 here, $1,000 here. I mean, it was just a random and it was pretty terrifying. And then to see like a negative balance on my, you know, in my account, I was just like, oh my gosh. For the next few weeks, Karen put her life on hold as she desperately tried to unravel Nelson's fraudulent activity. I really wanted to, you know, figure this out because, I mean, she was getting into everything. She was getting into, uh, you know, writing blank checks. I would receive phone calls for, like, a Dell computer, you know, a $7,000 loan. And, you know, all this stuff was, like, happening nonstop. What we believe happened was she had access somehow to her mail. It turned out Nelson used Karen's key personal information and posed as Karen to creditors. On average, more than 8 million Americans have their identity stolen each year. Authorities say there are ways to avoid being a victim. Check your statements, sign up to view the accounts online. That way you don't have to wait month to month to view them. You can view them weekly or even more frequently. The banks finally replenished her accounts with the money she had lost. Karen thought her nightmare was over. Was it over? It wasn't. It was not over. One morning, while waiting for the bank to open, Karen stopped by the Starbucks next door. That's where she saw Nelson, and that's where the chase began. So you're literally jogging. Yes. Are you on the phone? I'm on the phone, <laughs> trying to dial and get on the phone with 911. Nelson tried to escape in a cab, but Karen persisted, even staying on the line with 911 while pleading with a taxi driver. No. The 45-minute foot chase ended in this parking garage behind me, where the police finally caught the woman who was posing as Karen. And there she was. She was stooped over by the uh, exit sign over there, and he pulled her out. I couldn't believe it. Nelson was wanted by the police and had several prior convictions for fraud and theft. She pled guilty to one felony count of identity theft and was sentenced to 44 days in jail and three years probation. I really felt like it was a slap in the face. She's obviously not going to stop. <laughs> it comes back because it was. It was like a slap in the face. Now that Karen has taken her identity back, she is on a mission to help others learn from her ordeal. I'm blogging uh, my story and everything that's been happening. You know, are you hearing from other victims out there? That I, I am, actually. That can relate to your story? They are. They're, they're relating. And a lot of people said, I would have done it, too. I would have mm. fought back. And I'm so proud of you. So it's doing some good. The San Francisco Police Department was so impressed by Karen's detective work, they asked her to join the force. She thought about it, but ultimately declined. She's continuing to fight back, however, through her website, which is fightingbacknow.com, and trying to get legislation passed to help other victims of identity theft. Diane.